All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from K Hux Nation. And for today's video, today is more of like a, a theory crafting video uh, in terms of a card I kind of just happened to come across. And when I first, I remember when I first looked at it, I thought it was, eh, it was kind of a crap card. But when I think about it, it might actually be stronger than you think. Um, and even have a, the potential to have like, you know, fun budget decks built around it, too. All right. I don't know how... Now, in terms of a main deck, I don't know how competitive where they would be. Uh, I get the feeling it might not be competitive enough. But, at the very least, I think it does have enough potential to be worth considering as a sideboard card in competitive standard. Again worth at least testing out experimenting with i don't know how good it would be but it's worth experimenting with especially with the decks that are currently running around in the meta or or yeah in the meta okay so the card in question is actually veredity verity verity yeah verity circle which is a three mana cost blue enchantment for two generic and one blue enchantment and it says whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped if it isn't being declared as an attacker you may draw a card and you can pay four blue i mean four generic and a blue to tap target creature without flying now the second ability is nice because it helps enable the first ability but the main reason we're going to be using this card is for the first ability okay uh because I didn't think about it until I happened to come across it just now, but you can actually probably use this as a sideboard card against decks that have green in them. Because I don't know, for anybody who happens to be playing competitively right now, I don't know if you noticed, but like a good, a huge portion of decks right now are running green. Uh, a lot of the competitive decks are playing green right now. Um, most notably, including very specific cards, which are Nissa, which is probably the most difficult of Planeswalker uh, to deal with right now, is Nissa, as well as uh, a bunch of the mana dorks, the like one and two drop mana dorks. Okay, so I'm talking about creatures such as uh, let me add one and two drop. I'm talking about creatures like Leafkin Druid, Leafkin Druid, uh, Paradise Druid, Incubation Druid, and Lunar Royal Elves, okay? These four mana dorks are pretty much being seen almost all of the time right now. Most notably Leafkin Druid because of uh, Teamer Elemental, as well as Paradise Druid because of the Hexproof uh, when untapped, as well as sometimes Lunar Royal Elves for the early one-drop ramp. Uh, but yeah, mostly these two. There's a lot of decks right now running green that will have creature ramp in them. And because of the fact that they tap without having to attack, Verity Circle will actually trigger and be able to... What is this? That out here. Verity Circle will actually be able to trigger and thus you get free card draw off of the opponent's ramping. Okay, where is it? Where is Verity Circle? Let me add it to the deck so I don't have to pull it up later. There it is. Okay. Now, it also works as well for against Nyssa. Alright, so let me pull Nyssa up. Where's Nyssa? Uh, against Nyssa. Because a large portion of the time... Um, Players who play Nyssa will turn their creatures, in, I mean their lands into creatures and will also tap those creatures to cast spells such as uh, Hydroid Crisis, for example. Though that will also trigger Verity Circle, all right? So remember, whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped, if it isn't being declared as an attacker, you may draw a card. So... It's it's a great... I don't know if it's probably the best way to counter green, but I would say it's a it's worth testing out because I can very easily see 
decks getting huge value off of just letting the opponent's mana dorks live, play Verity Circle, and just let the opponent give you free card draw. Because now they're being punished for getting free mana <laughs> in the form of their creatures. Um, and, of course, card advantage. It's always better to have card advantage of this in this game. All right, more cards in your hand, uh, especially as a control player, uh, means that you probably have more answers uh, to to deal with what what the enemy is doing. Okay, um, now for those of you, for anybody that might be thinking, it's like, well, okay, that might be so, but how often will I actually be able to use it? Uh, here's the thing. Okay, just taking a quick look, if we just take a quick look at the uh, at the current decks, current top decks that are being played. If my Freaking browser wants to cooperate. There we go. If we just take a quick look at the decks, the the top decks that are being played from MTG Goldfish, we can see like half the decks in the format are using green. Okay, so just quickly scrolling down. Let me. There we go. That's a little bit better. Okay, just scrolling down a little bit. All right. Simic Nexus green. Simic Flash green. Uh, Jun Dinosaurs green. Teamer Elementals, there's like a few variations of Teamer Elementals. Green. Soul Tide Midrange, green. <laughs> Bant Ramp, green. Golgari Midrange, green. Some four color Dread Horde, green. Again, Teamer Elementals, green. Hydro Decks, green. Simic Deck, green. Like, there's like about half the decks in the format right now are being played with green. Um, most likely because of the fact that of the fact that right now Nissa is probably arguably the hardest planeswalker to to deal with um because now that the esper planeswalkers have answers direct answers against them the only color that doesn't really have much of a direct answer is green the most direct answer that we have against green is aether gust that is it all right there's no real actual direct counter to punish green for being green now basically uh so i don't know it's it's worth testing out i'm definitely gonna want to try and test it out if possible uh i'm very intrigued by it. I, I feel like i could get definitely huge value off of it uh because right now at least for me the decks i tend to struggle against the most are the ones that run nissa and that's it uh but on the on another another topic still on variety circle though outside of uh outside of you know sideboard play it is i think it is possible to poss possibly even make a decent deck around verity circle with verity circle in the deck okay so there's a couple ways you could do this um one variation is to actually have verity circle combined with wilderness reclamation okay so you'd be running a simic deck a red uh, a blue green deck so you could actually do a few things with it okay not only will you be able to recycle your your lands because of wilderness reclamation so like you on uh if you have both verity circle and wilderness reclamation on the field at the same time you could tap a creature on their side of the field during your turn all right get a free dr a, draw a card and then let wilderness reclamation untap so that way uh on their turn before they attack uh, or on a creature they haven't attacked with you can tap a creature again and draw another card okay and also maybe shut down um, them from being able to attack with a creature or so so that's one variation as well as the fact that if you're running a blue green deck you could also run those ramp cards they'll be able to make it easier to play verity circle and wilderness reclamation a lot easier too uh so that's a possibility um another thing that you could also keep in mind is that blue so many cards in blue right now have those tap effects that you know that are like always staple tap cards that like no one plays in competitive play but like who knows maybe the deck becomes big uh strong enough to be able to actually be competitive worthy so like cards like sleep you'd be like oh turn three turn three play verity circle all right turn four play tempest caller all right not only do i have a creature now but i just tapped all of your creatures and i got free card draw oh you had four creatures on the field i just tapped all of them got a creature untapped on my side of the field and 
I get to draw four free cards. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but it seems like pretty good value, in my opinion. Um, you can also combine it with cards like Capture Sphere, which has Flash. So you flash it in on the opponent's turn, tap their creature before they can attack with it. You get free card draw, and now they can't attack with that creature anymore. Um, Sleep makes it so that they uh, those creatures can't untap anymore either for the next turn, and you get free card draw too. It's uh dungeon geist which is just came in on n20 all right it's similar it's almost like a a, a single creature usage of sleep um but kind of no no of uh, capture sphere my bad um yeah it's like a creature version of capture sphere basically where when it hits the field tap a creature it doesn't untap as long as ca dungeon geist is on the field so i feel like there's synergy with the card for sure and it's even possible to make decks focused around it um if you wanted to as well you can maybe even make like just sky decks either red blue or uh blue white or even just sky decks focused around tapping opponents creatures play creatures that tap opponents creatures and then let verity circle just let you get free card draw uh so i believe there was a yeah this guy like law rune enforcer play it turn one boom oh they play they play big creatures they I don't know, any any creature basically that's not a, a mana dork, tap it for free. Oh, that's free card draw for one mana. I get to draw a card for one mana. Like, it's like a little nuts. Uh, and then you have like red blue cards. Where is it? Uh, ignoring the mono blue cards. There's a. It's like a three drop. It like taps it. Taps. Uh, it's like. Ta there it is. Sonic Assault. Three drop instant, you tap a creature, two damage the opponent, has jump start, and with Verity on a circle, you get to draw a card. <laughs> so it's pretty, I don't know, I don't know. I feel like it's decent. I feel like it could be decent. You put in some flash creatures in the deck or something uh, that can like, you, you, and you just kind of whittle them away because they can never attack because all the creatures are always tapped or can never untap. Um, so like, like I mentioned before with Tempest Caller, uh, Tempest Call and Dungeon Geist and stuff like that. You can just kind of like s just shut them down over time. I feel like it's decent. And then you can even run the big creatures such as like a Mesmerizing ben Benthid just to make their deck a living hell to play uh, to play with. Uh, just because they can never they can never escape. <laughs> you don't need you don't need board wipes if they can never use their creatures. Uh, I don't know. I feel like it's a fun idea. It's definitely worth testing out. Um, at the very least, though, if you choose, n even if you don't make a deck dedicated to something like that, uh, I do think it's worth at least testing out Verity Circle against green with it being in the sideboard uh, as a sideboard card. But other than that, that's it for today, guys. I just wanted to share my thoughts. I thought it was an interesting idea worth experimenting with go ahead and let me know what your thoughts and your opinions are about the card in the comment section down below but other than that if you enjoyed the video please leave a like subscribe and hit that bell button it's the best way i know when i upload more videos such as this one my name is brian and i will see you guys in the next episode peace guys